Um, what are you working on next? Uh, I've, I've been writing a new album. Mm-hmm. Uh, about I've been trying to get into the head of this fictional character who is thirty something, living in Denmark. And kind of doesn't really know how what to make of the whole uh, refugee crisis. Uh. I'm trying to explore the mind of a person who is who gets who gets emotional when he reads all these articles about drowning children, but then at the same time somehow really struggles to to f- to find find out how it has got anything to do with him you know i mean um i think i think we've got uh, we've got an issue with uh, not really dealing with reality on this subject uh, and i think that in a matter of very few years this thing will be very real for everybody. Yeah. So I think it's um yeah for me it's just it's right now it's interesting to explore through this thought experiment and then of course through a lot of research. What do you mean by this thing and how it becomes very real for yeah, everybody? I mean <clears throat> climate change and economic crisis and I mean we saw what we called a uh, refugee crisis a few years ago, but th- that was just like I mean a small sneak peek at what's going to happen in the Western world in the coming years. And I think uh, I think it's it's been a while now where we've like kind of pretended that there is not an issue. I mean we've been paying off Turkey uh, yeah. and and Greece to That's not. Uh, uh, so that we don't have to really think about this matter. Yeah. I mean, and and it only shows up as a newspaper article or press photo here and there, and then everybody can agree how horrific it is, but then five minutes later, you're on to something else. Mm. Um, and I mean, the easy way... Another devastating way, news story. Yeah, or a story about... A, social worker who somehow got her hands on some money which wasn't hers or whatever i mean yeah. it's just it it's it's it not it doesn't well the whole debate has been a big part of the political debate for years but it's not really about the people it's more this weird semi ideological debate about what we can allow ourselves to do or not do to these people coming and asking for our help, basically. Mm-hmm. And I saw, I think, the easy left-wing way to handle this issue would be to just write an album where you would just uh, criticize the hell out of anybody who don't have the compassion to help these people. And I think it's maybe more interesting, at least for me, to try and explore why. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, why a lot of people have these feelings or yeah try and be empathetic with them yeah right yeah it's a valuable lesson i mean because i don't think it's just all out of just sadistic evil tendencies i think there are some very real reasons for people to not really care about all these people who need help yeah Mm. for real yeah i've been i think that's very I, i really love the way that you you're talking about it, actually. I've I've been battling with it myself a little bit and set, tra- setting up now this whole our constant state right now of Corona. I can't imagine what the hell's going on down there, no. um, and what kind of extra amount of anxiety that must be bringing to crazy, those uh, uh, hundreds mm-hmm. and thousands uh, of people, millions of people even. Oh, yeah. um, you, uh, there are so many people that don't. I mean, there was a s- place in Austria. That uh, little town that said we don't want to take our quota of the of the refugees, mm-hmm. which in this time was something like ten or something. Mm. So they just decided to chip together and pay the fine mm. of a couple of hundred thousand euros mm. for not doing it, that right? Means. And at the same time, in Lebanon, 
we have twice the amount of Syrian refugees than Lebanese. Yeah. Two million, yeah. I think it is, compared to a million Lebanese. Mm. Just like, the situation is completely outrageous. And I'm, I was trying to think of a way to set up. I, one of my, what, what I'm working on right now, uh, I think I talked a little bit about, maybe, I, did I talk to you about Mondo Beat yeah. First Nation Orchestra? Yeah. Cool, yeah. Yeah, so the idea is to create a, a band from that has an inspiration from Nigeria, mm. uh, Fela Kuti, mm. who basically created the style of music called, that he called Afrobeat. Mm. It has some certain elements in there that have this thing of it's a groove mm. that goes and it can be put on, it's very uh, long form, mm. uh, jammy situation. And the idea is to try and take that philosophy and ability in that music and create a large band that sings music about hope mm. and peace uh, for people afflicted by war mm. and that we go down there and we play in all of the refugee great. camps um, great. and mm -hmm. th th there is the one thing there is the simple thing of meeting people on the floor mm -hmm. And also being able to include all of the musicians in the refugee camps, of which yes. there are probably many. Yes. And the style of music is inclusive. Yeah. So it can, and the whole uh, band is basically a choir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we still got some time. Yeah, yeah. Just um, out, yeah. I'm pulling out a list I want to show you. Oh, cool. And the idea is to try and uh, get down there. But then what? that's one thing, being on the floor, connecting with musicians, creating music creating hope, singing about peace, making sure that there is a face uh, available to the people of the refugee camps that are, is not just the face of an oppressor, you know, and the yeah. things, mm -hmm. and people, let them know about this. Uh, and then at the same time, use this as a vessel to talk about it. Uh, mm, I think that's such a great idea. We yeah. Do that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I, I, I even took a, I even went so far that I contacted the um, uh, jazz festival this year mm -hmm. and suggested them a, pro the, a one show project yeah. that was this band uh, and found the composer for it and the whole and how to set it up. 30 people I was going to set cool. up, but then of course the uh, virus yeah. and everything. So yeah. That was kind of, kind of be the, the starting point of it and start by talking about it and probably you know do a bit of a splash for it to then be able to apply for a whole bunch of funding that can make us go down there and it's basically a volunteer project mm. yeah that's just how yeah that'll happen because we do it's it, it's so important it's just our brothers and sisters are suffering mm. that's it uh, under our and it's just terrible also we uh, well from the sort of like uh, the, my worldview anyway is that the reason that they're fucked is partly also our fault we are, uh, war Denmark is a warfaring nation, yes. right? Uh, mm. We have responsibilities uh, and it's not just them and they didn't just, and it's not just Saddam's fault or mm -mm. Gaddafi's fault or whoever. It's our global society that c has an issue. Mm. And the issue is kind of the same as it is with the climate crisis that the hard thing or the hard part is to make it real, is to make it graspable mm -hmm. for the yeah for the layman for yeah. for the for most of the country really yeah the mm -hmm. this these people who are rightfully uh, very busy just making a living in their own life and not having a lot of time to really get into what's going on and yeah. what will be going on in the future, yeah? Yeah. So one thing which made it very real for me is this list I found. It, this was the list that started this songwriting process for uh -huh. my next album. There's a, um, a network called United, United Against Refugee Deaths dot EU. And uh, they put out this list called List of... Um, 34,361 documented deaths of refugees and migrants due to the restrictive policies of Fortress Europe. And it's basically a list with a date for when this person was found dead, a number for how many persons were found, 
name, gender, age, region of origin, and then cause of death. And it just goes on. And for me, this made it very real. You could have uh, February 13th, 18, Ibrahim Selim, boy, three years old, in Turkey, missing after boat sunk in the Evros River on Turkish Greek border, was fleeing post-coup crackdown in Turkey. Or February 4th, 18, Maliatu Mali Jalo, woman, 26, unknown origin, Drowned when small wooden boat capsized off coast of the Spanish enclave of Mejia. One survivor. And so on. And what is uh, so heartbreaking about this list is that it's not only people dying from falling out of boats, it's also a lot of people dying inside Europe. Either of illness, because they can't go to any doctor or hospital, but so many deaths people being run over on highways, mm. people trying to jump on trucks uh, before they cross the Calais channel. Mm. Mm. So many deaths that I know. I mean, if you, if you, and the reality if, is, if you run over a refugee in southern France on the highway, it's not even manslaughter because this person doesn't exist. The, we have these people, of course, it's not happening every day, but we have these people lying on the side of the road like a deer because they are just being run over mm. by people in their cars eating french fries. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah? Mm. So for me, this list made it very real for yeah, me. It's pretty real, man. And I think we need these things to understand how real it is. Because it's, I mean, because it's a very complex situation. And of course, we also have to accept that there are also a lot of valid arguments, even though I do not agree with them, there are a lot of valid arguments as to why we cannot take in a lot of refugees and so on. We need to accept these arguments if we are ever going to have a proper discussion about these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just feels like so many of these issues get swept under the rug so often by our governments that they just sit there smoldering mm. and then and and a little bit gets done but it's mainly so so slow and there's just so many people who, whose lives are just in this terrible stasis where they yeah they're locked between worlds in detention centers mm. um with the sort of terrible rights and just you know yeah, it's got to be, it has to, but then there's so many things that distract. Um, and I guess with a lot, in a lot of cases, it's just people wait until there's a crisis. Yeah. More crisis, and then they do something. I mean, that's the human pattern, yeah? That we yeah. need a decent crisis for us yeah. to act. Yeah. yeah. And the problem with the climate crisis and the refugee crisis alike is probably that when the crisis, the real crisis hits, mm. I'm not saying it's too late, but it's going to be very late at that point. Yeah. And there will already be so much suffering which has already taken place when we get to a crisis as clear as, for instance, this corona crisis. I mean... There will be thousands upon thousands of people dying as they try to flee from a country ridden by war. There will be thousands and thousands of people dying because of climate change before we get a, situa a lockdown situation in Denmark like we have today because of these things. Mm. Well, Mark... Thank you so much mm. for doing your work on the <laughs> on that, man. Mm. It's uh, really uh, inspiring to listen to you so talk inspiring. about it, yeah. bringing up some, bringing up the facts, and also making uh, emotional, concrete, understandable versions of this for people to understand. Thank you for your powerful work. Yeah. Thank you, and thank you so much for coming in. You really brought me brought tears to my eyes. You're a really powerful person. I wish you all the best. Likewise.